Hello and welcome to this quick little tutorial of some of the new features in Worldographer. I'm Joe Wetzel, the creator of the program, and this is version 0.90. We just released this today. Um, it's got a few new fixes, and in fact, we didn't do a video for the last two releases either, so I'm going to talk about a couple of the other features as well that, that were released previously. Um, we're going to get started with a quick little map, which takes us here, and I've got pretty much the default settings. There's a couple of changes for the the size of the map just so that it's um, a little bit easier to demo with. But when this finishes up, so we've got our, our quick little map done here. Scroll around to the more interesting parts. Um, one of the things that's new is we moved a couple of the menu items to a new menu bar, um, top level option, which is this generate menu. So you can do your generate coasts, you can do generate rivers and generate nations all off of there. Now rivers will take a moment because it's got to go through and find um, good places and in fact one of the changes that we made was to, to change the algorithm a little bit to give you longer rivers are preferred. So the first um, thousand times that it's trying to place things that it, it prefers uh, or it will throw out any result that's not say six hexes long essentially um, and then the next thousand or two thousand tries it'll throw out anything that's not five hexes long and then It'll allow for four and perhaps even three, I forget to be honest. So that's one of the changes. Another change is on the terrain drawer here. If you um, want to filter, you can now filter by isometric columns or isometric rows. And the isometric icon set is this kind of civilization, computer game style for, uh, terrain hexes. And so you've got a rose version too. So depending on how your map perspective is set, you pick one or the other and it just throws out all the other uh, terrain options that you don't need. Um, now next, actually, I'm just going to go into shapes, but uh, let me um, actually stick with terrain for a moment. Switch back to classic, um, which are the old um, star style icons, if you will. And one of the things that you can do, you can see that we changed the color of the rivers to this lighter blue because that matches uh, those those old maps a little bit better and so you can use this as kind of your uh, sea level you're not deep ocean yet um, kind of maybe your continental shelf if you will you can use that color and just place those down um, just like any other terrain in hexographer um, so now moving on to shapes um, one of the big changes is um, all about the presets and so we can have um, a preset river, for example, which has the color already set and the size that's comparable to what you see there. And so we can pick a line and uh, say, for example, if you want to have another, another river coming from this tropical forest down this way, you could. Um, and then if uh, I want to move on to roads, you can go to road and it has that color preset as well. And, you know, any of these other settings. Um, you can change these settings or replace them by going to add replace preset and if you pick the name that's the same as one of the others it will it'll um, change it and if you give it a new name it'll be a new setting um, what I'm gonna do just to show a little bit of that is just to change the color to something else I'll go ahead and do some sort of a fill uh, we can do uh, I'm just doing something as a test um, so now I can do add replace and we're going to say make that test create if we go polygon here and create a polygon you can see that we've got that new strange color um, polygon and um, we can go so now if we go river you know just to show that these things have changed now you can go back to test and you can see that those colors uh, the color settings for both the stroke and for the fill have been set if you want to delete it, you can go to delete preset, pick the one from the list, delete our test, and now we've done that. So that covers that. Um, then the next big feature is about the uh, map levels and kind of a better way or an easier way to zoom between them. Um, so I'm just creating uh, the continent and kingdom levels really quickly here. And I'm making them just a three to one so that it, so it does create them quickly. Otherwise, it would take, you know, two or three minutes to create some of them if you do like a six to one and a six to one. Um, and so now what you can do is you can right click while you're holding down the shift key to kind of zoom up. 
And so whichever hex you happen to be on is, is the one that's going to be centered in the, in the next map level that you view. So for example, if we come over here, you see that we got this mountain here. And if I do control right click to go down, you can see that that mountain hex was what we were centered on. If we do it again, again, we're centered on that. Um, and then if we want to go back up, you know, um, going up the centering, you know, isn't as important because you're going up and so the view is, is larger. Um, but going down, it definitely helps that if you've got, um, say, a particular um, city in a, in a particular hex and you want to zoom in to that particular hex and see exactly where that city is and the hex is right around that, it, it really helps. So that's the, the larger features that we've added in the past couple of releases. Um, we're getting really close to 1.0. Um, in fact, I'm, I'm kind of calling this a release candidate, if you will, that uh, if, uh, if nobody finds any major issues in the next couple of days, we'll probably make this a, a 1.0 release. Um, otherwise, if there are major issues, we'll, we'll address those and hopefully make the next one the, the 1.0 release. So uh, thank you very much for uh, for tuning into that and i hope that the the tool is helping you make uh make maps you like for your world thank you